G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is an INSAR rifle. The acronym INSAR means Institute Standard Assault Rifle, which therefore means the entire weapon's title is Institute Standard Assault Rifle Rifle, which is a little bit tautological and perhaps a little bit of a misnomer because an assault rifle by definition is a select fire intermediate cartridge rifle, but this is not that. This thing can only be fired in semi-auto form, so you could argue that it's more of a DMR and... Seeing how this barrel is super long, I think it'll fit into that role a little bit better than Assault Rifle. Just my thoughts on that, but it is what it is. So this thing, obviously, is a high-grade energy weapon manufactured by the Institute. The only thing that I think is missing on this is some nice, clean Institute paint that'll work well with the rest of the uh, sort of art direction when it comes to the Institute. And even if you throw on the uh, slot for the, um, the Creation Club paints, which has been removed... From this one for reasons that I don't quite understand. You could even probably slot the um, Institute things on because a lot of these assets are just taken from vanilla game guns. We'll play a little bit of a round of spot the assets. So the barrel here is lined by three times of the uh, sniper barrels for the standard laser gun. You've got the radium rifle uh, magazine here complete with a little bit of a greeble there and if you see underneath you can see just a little bit of yellow from those um, fusion cells that are stacked in series as it is and there's a little bit of lore about this weapon on the weapon mod page that actually ties into some of the attachments here and the way you find it in the world but we'll talk about that when we get to it because we want to talk about the gun more. So you've got the tiny little iron sight thing there that could be from anything. I believe that actually might be from a laser gun? Not actually sure. You've got this rear sight here, which looks like it's been lifted from the combat rifle slash combat shotgun. You've got a standard laser pistol grip right there, complete with two triggers there. That's interesting. A little bit of a barrel ending thing that you'll find on a combat rifle that is behind the uh, hand... Uh, not the handguard. Well, uh, technically it's behind the handguard this time, but also behind the... Um, the pistol grip, and you've also got, I believe that is a marksman sock for the laser gun here. So I think these assets have been used well, but again, I think a paint job would, on this thing would look pretty nice. Perhaps if it was found in gunner hands, it wouldn't have that paint job on, but I think it would look pretty slick with that Institute white paint job. You also notice how it's got the charging handle on both sides. It uses handmade rifle animations, which means you will have a reciprocating um, charging handle, bolt, or whatever, which doesn't really make a lot of sense on an energy weapon, considering we're firing off a battery magazine, but don't worry about it, it's fine. Let's get into the attachment. First of all, we've got the capacitors, which, um, there's a little bit of flavor for the descriptions of these. We'll go up to the best one for the 20 kilojoule capacitors, but, um, take your time to read those if you want to download this mod for yourself, because I think that, um, little bit of charm little extra, um, little bit of extra flavor in there. I think that's quite delightful. So go ahead and read that in your own time, but we've got to press on here. So if you see these AR9, AR9 spec barrels, that is the versions that the gunners have salvaged. Obviously they can't, um, me make the, uh, or meet the manufacturer's specifications or make the quality equipment like the Institute does. So it'll be a little bit weaker off. But if we go over to the combat barrel of the spec combat, the CIT spec, that'll give us the best damage and best uh, fire rate and increase our range a little bit over um, these carbine barrels, which are a little bit shorter. So um, they'll be slightly better in VATS, but you're going to knock your range to a point where it won't be worth using at a range where you might want to use a scope. So perhaps if you want to run in close range, that'll be a good option, but I think all around the CIT spec combat barrel will be what you want. And now you can throw on some stocks, including a marksman stock, which appears to be a recoil compensating stock from the laser gun. You've also got this one, which appears to be that of a railway rifle, which I think is kind of cool. And a wooden stock that's lifted from the gas rifle. Looks a lot like a PKM stock, don't you think? And you can't do anything with the magazines. You can't make it a big old drum of fusion cells, which is a little bit sad. But now we move on to sights. You have the standard sights, digital scope there which makes, it uses, I believe that is the uh, recon scope from the assault rifle that has just been used there. I don't think it actually changes the reticule that much, but yeah, four times zoom. They'll, um, they'll tell you how much zoom they got. Six times zoom, I think might be a little bit too much. I think uh, four times zoom might be where the uh, sweet spot is. There's also options for night vision as well, and no options for... Is there really no options for a recon scope? I guess there isn't. Well, that's odd. We'll go for a standard scope here. Let's go for this one. This laser gun one will suit this weapon. And now we've got muzzles. You can have a beam focuser like your standard laser guns with a compensating lens as well. Fine-tuned and gyro compensating. That's your 
first and second tier versions of your standard laser gun compensators or beam focuses. But if you want to get into the good stuff, you've got to go for these ones. They've got the frequency um, in the... What is that? I don't even know what that's measured off. Newton meters? Are we talking about torque here? 300 Newton meters of torque? This thing will, you know, it'll crush first gear. Uh, let's go for a beam focus here. That'll increase our range and increase our damage a little bit. So that's nice. But if you feel like the recoil is too much, um, you can throw in a compensator. But honestly, you never want to choose anything but a beam focuser on laser guns just because the range benefits you get out of it outweigh any recoil compensation or perhaps any recoil penalties that you might incur by uh, and uh, attaching those things. And I think that's about it for this thing. I've also got options for legendary effects, which would be pretty useful, I think. Now, before I get into it, I just want to say that I have installed the energy weapon um, fix. So it should be doing damage as if it was you know, shooting ballistic projectiles and doing the damage in the ballistic thing, but we won't get any of the um, floating damage mod because for some reason those two mods are incompatible and I don't know why. It's kind of odd, but it is what it is. We'll have to work our way out by feel, I think, on this thing, but I'll show you how to get these things. Welcome to University Point. We're in the Cedric Hall. That's basically the front door, and we're confronted with this particular cell. I think it's a pretty good dungeon, actually, but there's where University Point is on the map. We've got the castle there. Gunners Plaza down there, Adam Cat's Garage, so pretty southern spot of the map. You'll find a lot of synths and also a lot of um, Mylurks in here. But what you want to do is head to the end of the uh, dungeon where the steamer trunk is. So hit this terminal, there's some extra flavor lore on this thing. But what you want to do, open that door there and pop down. And then there's a bunch of crabs in here. You don't have to kill them. You can outrun them easily just by sprinting. So walk right through. If there are any legendaries, then uh, try to take them out. But these guys, you know, they're not the worst thing in the world. Little baby Milox. Find this double white door. If you find that, then you're going in the right direction. In this room, you'll find a couple of synths. I've had a couple of good legendary drops over the years from this particular room. But take them out and uh, move on to this more open room. You want to find the um, room that has the terminal next to the duffel bag. Here it is on the uh, very northeasterly part of the map. And you'll find an Insar rifle sitting right on the trunk here. And with that, we are done. We can leave leave these synths behind. There's a conveniently chained Skyrim door here that will allow you to go out the front and you can even exit on the roof as well to get a more uh you can survey the area because there's so much around here but uh, yeah, you get the idea welcome back to the immersive gunners plaza and i think the inside has got its work cut out for it i might be a little bit of a tough slog but we'll see how we go so you've already seen this one in first person and obviously it's got that uh scope that's very vanilla game-ish so i made this one this is the second insa that i made and it's the carbine barrel cit spec of course with a reflex sight and i believe i put a different stock on it well i didn't you can't see it in first person anyway so it's fine don't worry about it and as you can hear it makes the same sound as a vanilla game laser gun and this one appears to have different muzzle effects different muzzle flashes i actually kind of dig that that's neat and i think this weapon could do a little bit more in like differentiating itself between the institute gun and the uh, laser gun that's already in the game and the easiest way you could do that is just take the standard sound that you get and just play around with it with the in the creation kit uh, yeah the creation kit yeah that's the one the creation club is the paid mods but yeah, you add a little bit of reverb, add it echoing, just make it sound a little bit different. Maybe overlay some other weapon sounds on top of it, just to make it sound a little bit different, to give this weapon more of an identity rather than just like a niff bash version of a weapon that kind of exists already. But, you know, just give it a little bit more something. And look, there's no scopes way at all. That's helpful. Anyways, so gonna bring it here. Obviously, the sniper perk are doing us pretty well. And if we can keep them at arm's length here for as long as possible. That was dumb. I'll just grapple hook myself back up there. Uh, well, we could probably do pretty well. Get as much um, in the way of uh, sneak criticals as possible to start off with. I've got no idea how much damage I'm doing, but just a, like gut feeling. I feel like this thing's hitting pretty hard. Although, you need to go down. Perfect. Uh, another, another bloody mantis. Yeah, whatever. 
Wait for my AP to come back, I think. There's a sniper knocked down on you. Whilst they're advancing. There we go. Now we're back. We are so back. And that guy comes tumbling towards me from being ragdolled in slow motion. Let's keep on going. Now I'm thinking using this thing with the reflex side is going to make it slightly better in VATS. Probably bottled most of my opportunity to get as much damage as possible there, but we'll begin. And this weapon, I mean, you can fire it extremely fast, and it will hit, but it might take a toll on your amount of uh, <laughs> fusion cells you're able to carry. So it might be a pretty heavyweight, high-strength weapon to use, considering how much ammo you're going to carry around for it, but it'll definitely do the job. I think DPS has got itself covered, and I might have to actually give myself some fusion cells post this fight. I, I will say, though, that it does feel like it is powerful. It's, I, you know, it's just kind of hard to say and demonstrate that when I'm going off feel here rather than numbers pouring out of the screen when I'm shooting these guys. So you just have to take my word for it. Hopefully, that guy's vibrating. Stop right now. There we go. That, that'll stop him. Just disintegrate him for good measure just in case he wants to keep doing that. Is that gunner got an axe? I think we're really stretching the definition of gunner here, don't you think? No, she's picked up a rifle. That's good. So the ability to knock people down like this, I mean, the high magazine capacity is great, um, but having a scope and the fire rate, like what you see here, has uh, pretty pretty instrumental at just neutralizing targets before I put them down for good. As I say that, that guy is just completely immune to getting knocked down like that. But there's utility value there, which I don't mind at all. And there's not a lot of recoil in this weapon anyway, so you know, forget the gyro compensating lenses, you never need them. Nice pirouette. Should have been a ballet dancer, not a commonwealth gunner. You may have lived to see tomorrow. There we go. Yeah, kind of taking it pretty easy now. Let's throw some criticals in the mix. Cheeky little stagger there does pretty well. Mysterious Stranger has shown up again. We'll try to protect him. He can soak up some of this damage for us. Uh, maybe we go around the other way. Actually, I, th I don't know. The Mysterious Stranger showed up for two seconds and then didn't do anything. So maybe not the best uh, example of what he could do. I do think just on balance, just using a four-time scope, like I'm fairly close to my enemies now, but... Even when I'm at this sort of medium distance, and that didn't help that didn't help himself running into a wall there to completely stop his movement, but even at close range, you can still get a lot of good use out of this thing. So as a one size fits all and versatility wise, I think this um this four time scope is definitely the best choice. Long barrel along with that gives you a good reason just to stay at a medium distance so you don't have to run in point blank but if you do this thing can cover you with its good dps and if you don't like the uh, recoil animation there's always the option of utilizing it say in um in third person where you don't have to worry about those pesky animations getting in the way of your muzzle or your sight picture so that's good um also i think i was messing around with this thing with the compensating lens and it turns the beams red so if you want a red beam then you can use the uh, the lenses of uh, recoil compensation but the standard blue beam you get with the uh, beam focuses which well you'd rather have that wouldn't you I would go, hopefully Mr. Stranger does something here excellent I kind of got to conserve my ammo at this stage, but we've done, we've done pretty well so far. As for uh, as for most energy weapons, generally they don't really make it this far, but this thing's been actually working. Dare I say, it is well balanced. Of course, I ha I've got a mod that I'll actually allows uh, energy weapons to be used at their full potential. Whether that's actually intended by the mod author at all, which I don't think they made mention of it on the mod page, but perhaps I'm getting a little bit more power out of this than the author intended, but even then, it still feels like it's actually pretty decent, and the last ones we've got left, unless they've uh, popped out already, are these ones. I want to pay close attention to how many shots we get in bullet time bats here, because nice. I haven't really been able to do that. 
Not enough to drop a guy in one shot. I mean, one... Obviously, one shot, but in one vats round, in one run. No visible man can escape my detection, and little baby gonna private. I was gonna ask him for any last words, but he was pointing a rifle at me, so I just put him down, and there we go! So, I actually thought we'd struggle there, but I actually cruised through it pretty smoothly there. This weapon, it's got good DPS, provided you've got a good trigger finger, and it's got an ability to knock down, that's a huge plus, and it looks cool too. Also, and you can wear it as well, and I think it looks really good. Again, just missing that Institute white paint. It was so close to perfection, but um, obviously room to grow here, but liking it so far. I think we'll struggle against bosses, so we'll have to see how this one goes. So the idea, I think, is just to get as many snake criticals as possible, and that might be easy to do, provided we can get a knockdown and sort of keep him at arm's length again, and we'll see how we go. Compared to real time, we can stack on the damage extremely fast if we fire in slow motion because, you know, the bullet time bats doesn't actually limit your ability to um, fire. It's not, not going to put a cap on the amount of bullets you can put out. Look at those misses. There we go. There's a 3.9 sneak criticals. We're probably a little bit out of range at the moment, but we can just chip away at his health until he's ready to drop. Ah, there's a ghoul over there. Can I target him? No. We gotta be careful here, because he might actually um, ragdoll himself. Stop at him. Ooh, splat. There we go. Mutated. So when that ghoul showed up, he was aggroed to that, and that was uh, stopping me from getting the snake criticals, but we've pretty much kept him at his spot there, and we're getting 80% accuracy from here, so perhaps we are in range. So we'll go for a bit of a crit spam vats run here. Mysterious Stranger even shows up. That's helpful. Extra 800 or so damage. At least if memory serves. He goes to stomp on him. He gets pirouetted instead. Yeah, okay. So there's a big difference in damage. So we're definitely getting full damage all the way back here. So perhaps I um, misspoke earlier when I was talking about how you wouldn't want to put anything more than a medium scope. You could probably make a medium scope work. But again, like I was talking about before, having this uh, four times scope where you can be jack of all trades. Like even if you're from me to that tree away, like you still got plenty of field of view around it. And when you've got such high precision from this weapon, you may as well have a nice little crosshair telling you exactly where that laser beam's going to go, so I'm still gonna back this four times scope, but that doesn't mean that you can't use longer magnification scopes and be successful anyway, which is great. This weapon is showing a lot more versatility than I thought, so I'm actually impressed so far. It's exceeding expectations in pretty much every single way. Okay, let's go for a more high pressure combat situation here. We'll start off by uh, at least getting a few cheap sneakies on Mr. Ghoul over there. Or we could just knock him down and completely knack him entirely. It's a repeat of what happened against the swan, but... You know what? I'm taking it. Oh, yeah. He decided that he was going to be invincible for a few bullets there. I think I got a sniper knocked down during his, like, getting up animation. Wait, we didn't even aggro all of those insects down there. That's my job, is it? Usually he runs off to clean up a few of these insects, but today, that's not the case. And, for some reason, no mantises today either. Well, I didn't expect that to go that well. Um, we'll try something else. One could argue that I've been using the uh, sniper perk as a little bit of a crutch for this weapon to sit on, but... You know, it's a viable strategy, it's a perfectly reasonable strategy, very effective and cheap and awesome, but... Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to try and fight this guy without utilizing such a perk. So we've switched to the carbine barrel with the um, reflex sight for enhanced vas vats usage or slow motion vasps. Vafs. Bullet time. Why would that? Vafs doesn't roll off the tongue at all. It feels like I'm trying to say vafs, but I bite my tongue halfway through when I need to stop getting hit by that. That's nasty. Nasty damage. But... You've just activated my the trap card, my friend, because that was the first time I've gone into Nerd Rage, which means I get Destroy of Acadia. Game over, chump. 
it's, it's one crutch or another, but he, he activated that. So that one's not on me. I didn't intend to get hit there, but there we go. I think you get the idea. So the Insar, um, although it could be uh, named a little bit better, like maybe like Institute Battle Rifle. I mean, it's not a high caliber, full caliber cartridge like rifle thing, but I don't know, maybe Assault Rifle. It'd be cool if there was automatic options here, but clearly you don't need them. The DPS is quite good enough as it is so overall it's a pretty good weapon mod like i said before it kind of exceeded my expectations that's maybe because i've got the uh um energy weapon damage mod installed properly this time and i'm actually getting this weapon to see this weapon at its full potential at least on very hard difficulty where half your damage is taken away um before you even calculate the damage resistance but I've had a good time with this thing, and, you know, like I said before, giving it a, a bit of a white paint job to make it fit with the Institute aesthetic, and just giving the, uh, just tweaking the sound a little bit. I might be asking a lot here, maybe outside the modder's vision of this thing, but giving it a little, just making it sound a little bit different, giving it a little bit more of a identity, um, so it can separate itself a little bit more from your know, vanilla game items, which, you know, it obviously uses the parts from, but you could make it feel more apart from them uh, obviously not looking like a toy like the institute assault rifle or the institute rifles in the vanilla game but i do think um just adding it sounds gives it a little bit of character as well you could always use a little bit more character in your weapon mods i think so yeah there's uh, room to improve here but overall i'm pretty happy with it and would go ahead and suggest that you download this one um so this is the same dude who did those two um, rifles, the M72, I think, the Gauss rifle. And there was that assault rifle, battle rifle thing. And the craft here, I think, is certainly better. This thing looks way cleaner than what we've seen previously. So, you know, we've seen improvement here. And I want to encourage that and would hope to see even more. And, you know, maybe we'll see some real good stuff coming from this mod author soon. So, yeah, good stuff. And, uh happy to see what you've got for us next time if you're listening but yeah i'm happy with it and the, sh the signs of improvement are off the charts so good download it recommend it check it out thank you very much for thank you very much for watching guys i hope no one heard me mess up that bit